than five years ago, DirecTV put the Dan Patrick Show on air, and the sports world did rejoice. Now, Dan would serve as the captain of the ship while the four bumbling idiots, the Danettes, would degrade the brand. Hmm. Dan gives them the precious gift of being on TV and radio every day. How do they repay him? By finding new empathetic ways to steal his airtime. So, what does DirecTV do with this little problem? I'm glad you asked. They do exactly what the opposite of what you're thinking. They give them their own show in addition to letting them ride Dan's wake. Surf up, buddy. Well, that's what do we call this crown jewel of broadcasting? Again, I'm glad you asked. That's right, Teller. It's the box score. And it starts right now. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple. C's get degrees. Need a long and appropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Power Tower for Box Score. Hello and welcome to the Box Score. I'm Brock in Los Angeles, joined by the Danettes who are in New York City, and they had uh, Adam Sandler, comic genius, drop by today. And Dan has actually been in 13 of Sandler's flicks, uh, starting with Waterboy in 1998. Seton, which one of these glorious films is your favorite? One of Dan's films Ooh. is my favorite. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, I'm going to say that's my boy. Because <laughs> that's the one that we're all in. Um, I don't know. He's had so many memorable roles. But although, in all seriousness, I do like that's my boy because he actually played a part. Like, he wasn't just like Dan the cop. He was like, he had real lines and real acting to do. You know, my, my favorite, funny thing is, my favorite Dan role is not in a Sandler movie that he was in, it's in House Bunny. I like him as the, the quick cameo as a cop in House Party. I thought it was a very funny scene. And my favorite Sandler movie, Dan's Not In, Funny People. I, I watched Funny People just oh, the other yeah. day, and Dan's Not In that. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of a sneaky good movie if yeah. you haven't seen it. But so I like uh, Dan as, a, as the short shorts gym teacher in Grown Ups 2. It was mm -hmm. totally random. Oh, yeah, when he's with Aniston yeah. and Kidman, though, that's not bad. Being yeah. up on the, uh, the stage, yeah. let's go with it. All good stuff. Well, uh, Dan uh, got Sandler to look back on uh, SNL and uh, wondered if he would ever return. Have you been asked to uh, host SNL? Not recently, but over the years, yes. Yeah. Would yeah. you do it? No reason to do that, I don't think. But uh, I like watching. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to be hosting anymore. You don't want to do that. It's a lot of pressure, man. I can't handle it. It's like five, six days of uh, constant pressure. I, I, I don't want to do it. But I like watching. I love the 40th anniversary. It was the greatest being back. If, I, if they could do one of those every year, an anniversary <laughs> every year, I would love so, to do that. So if they did the 41st anniversary. I would be there every time. I really enjoy, some of my favorite interviews lately have been comedians in studios. I love yeah. the process of comedians. It's a life that... I'm closer to being an athlete than I am a comedian. You know, we're all, you know, we've all played sports, but we've never done, like, even though we do some comedy on this show, it's not, we never based our career kind of as yeah. being a comedian. And that, that, they're a different breed, and I'm always very fascinated by them. So when I hear about their process mm -hmm. of, oh, I wouldn't want to do Saturday Night Live five or six days, 20, 20 hours a day, no thanks. Yeah. Interesting. And I, well, well, I, I don't want to stroke your ego, but you are much closer to being a comedian <laughs> than an athlete. You're probably right. <laughs> I don't know. I might disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Which do you think he's farther from? Like, I we're talking Grand Canyon distance? Or? I think both uh, professions are safe for me. <laughs> I also loved Sandler's uh, honesty about that, because like, he comes across so natural and comfortable, but he's like telling us that he would be too nervous, all the, the pressure of having yeah. to be funny and host the show, and you would never, you know, you would never, never know until he said that they would actually be really yeah. nervous all those days leading up to hosting SNL. Hey, Fritzy, are Sandler's feelings regarding SNL on a similar wavelength to uh, Dan's feelings regarding uh, ESPN? Uh, I don't know. It's hard to uh, to equate the two. I'm not sure exactly. I know Sandler was let, Sandler, uh, Sandler was let go. I don't know if Fired. it was under uh, you know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how angry or upset he was. I know Dan, you know, was seemed anyway very comfortable about moving on, and he's uh, 
He's done as well. If you, if you could easily argue, he's done uh, better than ever with his career and everything that he's involved in post. Uh, and you could say that for uh, Sandler as well. So I, I would make that yeah. analogy that they both moved on. Whether, whether you can, uh, whether you talk about the animosity levels or how uncomfortable it was. You know, I wasn't there for obviously any of those types of conversations between management and Dan or and Sandler. Sandler told us a story a couple times ago that he was on his way out. They knew he was yeah. on his way out. He was going, and I, I don't know if it was Rock or someone else was also going. And then they found out they weren't renewing. It was one of those things like, hey, I quit, you're fired. Yeah. Yeah. He was going, and then he, they just knew he was going. And they've both been tremendously successful. Yeah. But yeah. Sandler went back for the anniversary. Dan would not go back for an anniversary right now. Maybe uh, he would. I well, disagree. He, well. He, well, he hasn't yet. Well, I don't know if there's something specifically that he's been invited to. Uh, he went back for Stuart Scott's uh, service, which is... That's off the board. That's not even the same thing. But if they did some history of Sports Center gala and they did an on-air thing, like equivalent to the 40th anniversary. Yeah, and the boss of ESPN asked Dan directly on a mm -hmm. phone call. I think Dan would absolutely say yeah, yes. Yeah, I'd be shocked if he would turn that down. It's, if they would, it had to be something very specific, though. Yeah. Not, you know, they had nothing hokey. And I don't know if he, he would go to be on air. I think he would just go and hang out. Probably. Well, uh, when Sandler was in there, it was a lighthearted interview. But one Danette had a serious problem with him and couldn't wait to drop it on him. I don't want to give any, any plot points away, but yeah. all the Danettes were situated next to a character with a key line. Right. And I was sitting next to Dan, but then they moved me next to our friend. You didn't get in there? Yeah, I was next to Steve Cord. Yeah. And after the we shot, I right. said to you, I'm like, you know, I'm a little worried. Dan Patrick's not going to lose a line. Right. Robert Smigel's not going to lose a line. Yeah. Steve Corn might lose a line. Yeah. And you said, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. You're in there. You're in there. You look great. You were, just, you were in there, and I didn't know. I thought I thought there's a wide shot. You're in a wide shot. Right? Yeah, I'm in a wide shot. I know, but <laughs> if you watch it when it comes out on your iPad, you can do that thumb finger thing, and you're gonna, <laughs> it's going to get right to you. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, I'm, I'm glad. I'd almost... It's worth getting cut from the movie just to hear him say that line. <laughs> By the way, my, the scene that got cut was a guy next to me said the line, I'm just like, like that. <laughs> that's what got cut, which is pretty much what the I'll wide shot was. Anyway. Though, you know, guilting Sandler on national TV, I think, is a great move because now he's not going to think about it for a second when he leaves this building today. But let's say two years from now we get to be extras in some movie and we're all sitting yes. there. And the same man's sitting there with his shorts and his flip flops and his cup. And we're all being set in whatever scene we're in the background of. Uh, I screwed you last time, didn't I? Didn't I? Which yeah, one yeah. did I screw? Which one did I screw? And then all of a sudden you get front bill. Like he, he's the kind of guy who would remember that little oh, yeah. thing in the moment. And you're going to get like front row or whatever. I love the way you went back and was like, yeah, why show? What's that supposed to be? I, mean, I might as well have not been there if you're going to put me in a one. Yeah, trust me. During, <laughs> during the premiere, I'm like, oh, there I am. There I am. Sort of off to the side. Yeah. But uh, that's good, all right. Good time. Hey, Seton, are you able to uh, uh, sit back at times like this and appreciate how cool of a moment it is? Yeah, I mean, I, I think sometimes we get a little, I, I was saying in the box, jaded, but I don't think jaded is the right word. But, like, you know, Paulie and I were talking about how we got more excited about the free candy and popcorn and soda than, and lost sight of the fact for a second, or just we're so in the moment that we're like, yeah, we're at a movie premiere where we're all going to be on in, in this movie right now. We're going to be on this huge screen. And, whoa, free candy? All right, this yeah. is awesome. So we do, we get to do a lot of uh, really awesome things. And yeah, this having Adam Sandler in here and having one of my fellow Danettes complain about his uh, amount of screen time. <laughs> it, so I, weird. It's, it's kind of surreal, but it feels right. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. feels like this is exactly where we're supposed to be at this moment in time. <laughs> I, 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 very comfortable. We're on like a roller coaster ride. <laughs> and when you get off the roller coaster ride, it's separate from the ride itself. And you can't look back at a roller coaster ride while on it, right. whilst on it. And so it's one of those things, we're going to have fun. He's going to jab Sandler, or when Sandler comes in, I'm like, hey, Adam, you know, like that, yeah. like as if he's some friend of mine. But then the day this all stops, that all stops. And we're, we don't, it's not that we don't appreciate it, but we also can't sit there thinking about it when he's sitting in the room. You know, you, you got to be, right. you got to be uh, kind of a professional and then kind of think about it later. All right, coming up, uh, we're going to have a conversation with the uh, skipper. Oh, you know who could have rescued those people on Gilligan's Island? Yeah. The Ram 1500 Eco Diesel drives everyone down there to the lagoon, honks its horn. They hear it in Hawaii. They come over and rescue everybody. And then, uh, while they're taking the time to get over there to rescue everyone, you sit in the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel, enjoy the air conditioning all day long because of its fuel efficiency. Get more facts at ramtrucks.com. Guts, glory, Ram.
Welcome back to the box Board. Today on DP, Don Mattingly joined the show today. Polly, DP and Dan seem to have a real simpatico. Uh, have they been longtime friends, or is uh, just the skipper a really great interview? Uh, a little of both, but yeah, he comes off really friendly with Dan. I was with Dan at the All-Star Game 02 in Milwaukee, and I'd never met Don Mattingly before, and we were at this little shindiggy. And Dan goes, hey, and they hugged it out and had a beer, and I was like, wow, I had no idea. And I don't know what the relationship was before that. Maybe Dan's CNN days in New York City. That would be my guess. But, uh, yeah, they, they always got along real well, and it's we have them on so often that it, it just doesn't surprise mm -hmm. me anymore. It's been a really good thing, and we're, you know, the relationship, we don't, I, don't, I th also don't think we bore him with, yeah, 3-2 the other night, and you sent in this, you know, he doesn't want to hear that. No, not, uh, not at all. All right, well, Maddenly talked about his first place team and Zach Grinke's dominance this year. He's just been on a roll from the very beginning. Usually, the last couple of years, I've noticed it kind of takes him a little bit to get into the season, and then he gets rolling. Uh, this year, it's been right out of the gate, and um, he seems that his command's been a little bit better as far as, you know, hitting the corners and stuff, so he's been shorter pitch counts, uh, his slider's been, to me, better this year than last. Uh, his changeup's really, you know, it's getting better and better. So he, he's just been, he's been tough all year. Interesting. Have you guys seen any uh, editorials about how Zach Greinke avoids interviews for social anxiety and doesn't get criticized, but Marshawn Lynch does get criticized? Is it social anxiety related? Yeah, oh, he has a long history. I, I, know, I know, we've tried many times to get him You've on. You've been trying? Yeah, he's yeah. famous. But he Zach Greinke, is he a self-promoter in other ways? And is he outspoken in other ways? Yeah. And me first in other ways on the field, that's in opposition to his not wanting to do interviews with the media. Well, I don't know. I mean, are you gonna, one, he makes way more money than Marshawn Lynch does. Yeah. Way more money. So he doesn't really have to supplement his income through endorsements and stuff like that. But then what are you gonna get into like comparing like, well, look at the flashy shades Marshawn wears versus look at how long Zach Greinke's yeah. growing his hair, right? I mean, you really can't sort of parse it out that way, can yeah. you? Zach Greinke is married to a beauty queen, too. Miss, miss something. Shocker. Yeah. But. I mean, but, does the does Major League Baseball force you to do interviews? Uh, I don't I don't know if they have that rule. It's a great question. You know? I, yeah, I, I mean, that's teachers, really where Marshawn Lynch got into trouble. Yeah. Like, they're, just, they're making me do this. Yeah. I mean, well, but I, But isn't that why football is better than baseball? Because they do make their guys say that you can't get away with never talking. You can't get away with not doing interviews. Well, yeah, uh, but then you're making somebody with social anxiety issues like a villain just because they don't, well, I just don't want to do this. You know, like yeah. I can't, I have a thing that, you know, like this really causes me a lot of stress. Uh, yeah. yeah, it should be a medical it's got uh, It's got to be the exception if yeah. you can prove that you've got some kind of, you know, disorder. It, it is, it is funny that you could ignore. pitch in front of 60,000 but not talk to one. Yeah. By the way, and again, I'm not critiquing yeah. it, but I find it fascinating. Well, Did yeah. you request That's... that? What do they say when you ask for Granky? Yeah, it's just, no. he, does, he, just, he doesn't do radio interviews or he doesn't do interviews, you know. Oh, it's sorry. You know, they, they kept it kind of, they didn't get into details about any kind of condition he has, which may in fact be the case, but it's, at least in recent requests that hasn't been brought up to Have me. you ever asked for a medical, like, note? <laughs> I have not gone that far to say, <laughs> uh, you know, prove to me that he's got me a note for the doctor. condition where he's going to get too panicky to uh, talk to hmm. a <laughs> Strange. I, uh, Dan offered to help Mattingly get uh, Jimmy Fallon tickets for the coaches' wives this Thursday. Fritzy, if you had a, a request for similar tickets, would Dan help you in the slightest? Hmm. Uh, would Dan help me I, to get tickets to something that I really wanted to go to? I think he uh, would absolutely do that. You know, I'm sure he'd like maybe a little explanation as to what it's all about or who it's for, if I'm going to personally be uh, going or is it for... Uh, for other people, but um, you know, even just this past week, Dan went out of his way, you know, to make sure we all got included in the uh, premiere. And then uh, I asked if uh, we can bring our wives or bring a plus one, and he went out of his way again. So uh, just as recently as these last couple of days, he's he's very good with that. He wants Are to make sure. Are you concerned that you cried wolf on this one and asked for wives to be included and us to go to the premiere? And yeah, then I, I, I thought about that a little bit. You know, you know, you got to pick your spots, and if you're going to make a request and. Uh, and have the uh, the boss man go out of his way to at least make sure that uh, you're, you're going to keep your end of the bargain if you're going to ask him to mm. set something up for you, and then you don't end up even going, and then you just kind of it is a cool move though. Pieces. You you are invited to a premiere of a movie that you're in, and you don't show. Yeah, That's very Hollywood yeah, of you. I'm, uh, well, I was, finally, I was very is it, LA. Isn't your approach usually to 
to go out and ask celebrities to do things without Dan knowing. <laughs> and then if that fails, I guess you bring in Dan. But yeah. usually you just like keep, keep Dan over yeah. on the side. Yeah, and I got my work different angles. Different yeah. Yeah. It does seem like Fritzy doesn't really need much help. Yeah, I was gonna say, to Dan might need Fritzy's help to get <laughs> yeah, on these sure. shows. Is there a celebrity who has not agreed to do a video for your son's bar mitzvah that you need Dan to put the closing? Oh, Sandler's a great one. Yeah. Has he done a video there, there for the been, bar mitzvah? I'm gonna say no comment on that, but there have been, I don't know. No, there have been some celebs and athletes where- um, Great, they, okay, so they just has don't Sandler play. been asked to do a video for your son's bar mitzvah? Yes or no? Uh, Sandler or his people? <laughs> Oh my yes God. or no question? I'm, I may have reached out to... Is that a yes? That is a yes. Okay, well, has he done what it was already? the response and did he do it? There, I, I don't know if I hope my son's not watching. There, there, there may be something in the can oh. to roll. In a couple oh. It's done. Uh, it's possible. It's very. It's right? within the realm of possibility that the salmon was on board and assisting. It's funny that you, he did it for your son's bar mitzvah, but you didn't show up to his movie premiere. That's, that's, that's pretty hurt. cold. But again, that's the Hollywood in me where yeah. I'm like, even though I was, you know... In, in the movie, and for a couple seconds, I decided to, uh, to blow it up. I wish this show was a bar mitzvah, and you could work <laughs> on it. Although, okay, now we can look at it the other way. Unless Todd is saving his uh, free movie Fandango tickets that we got from them when they were in studio, he's actually going to go pay to see the movie, whereas the rest of us, as of right now, have no plans to go pay that to see That is true. I'm supposed to go with my pixels. family this weekend, and he paid for and candy. Yeah, yeah, right. And he paid for candy. That being said, we were just given free movie tickets from the good people at Fandango. So, All right. a, and we got four. That's true. You do have a family which I, four. Which we, uh, we already used. <laughs> oh, you uh, used oh, them. Yeah. Yeah. So if we, if we go to uh, to Pixels this weekend, which yeah. we plan on doing, it's going to be uh, it'll You're be actually pricey. Gonna pay. Popcorn and snacks yeah. and drinks and stuff. That's going to be a... Uh, Dust off the wallet. It's I will be, nice be the ticket. moil and I will end the segment right here. Okay, coming up, uh, no matter w uh, how well Dan and, uh, D or Dan and Don know each other, they don't know these answers about the Danettes. It's Know Yourself next. Welcome back to the box score. Guys, in the spirit of hang Hattie, uh, hanging out with Adam Sandler today, I thought I'd quiz you on who your favorite actors are. Uh, certainly Adam Sandler's on the list, right? Okay, kids, it's time for a little game we call. No! No, no thyself. No! Self. All right, about a month and a half ago, we asked you <laughs> what actor you wanted to hang out with and have some beers with. Certainly, you recall that. Let's start off with you, McLovin. Who was the actor that you wanted to hang out and have a beer with? Mm. George Plumpton. George Plumpton has passed away. Paper lion. And he was a writer. Can I guess what you guessed? Yeah, I need help. help. I, I think you yeah, guessed Paper Benedict Lyon. Cumberbatch. Ooh. Let's go with Benny Cumberbatch. <laughs> Oh, is it Sherlock Holmes, Benny Cumberbatch? The actor or actress I'd most want to have a drink with. Um, oh, I'd most want to hang out with Robert Redford because I think he'd have the best stories. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. Robert Redford. You definitely of said it though. Yeah. All right, next up. Tape saying Robert Redford. <laughs> Butch Cassidy or Sundance. Uh, next up, Seton. Uh, who did you want to catch drinks or dinner with? Hmm. Well, man. Is it I'm living not... or dead? Are they going to be living? Probably... Living or dead? It's probably either Johnny oh. Depp or Leonardo DiCaprio. And then I would have been like, well, I'm going to say Johnny Depp because we'd, we could probably talk about a lot of things. All right. Was it Edward Scissorhands? He would want to. I would want to have dinner or a drink with Johnny Depp, because he's a good actor, uh, knows music, plays the guitar, kind of has like a pirate thing going on. I could hang with him. Congratulations. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I got lucky on that. <laughs> <laughs> Next. That's kind of a pirate thing going on. Yeah. Cool. Next is Fritzy. Fritzy, Fritzy, Fritzy. Dare I ask, who do you want to go out and have uh, drinks and dinner with? I can't remember. I can't remember what I said. I'm narrowing it down between Stallone, DiCaprio, Jenna Jameson, and Jennifer Love Hewitt. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Stallone. Oh, but uh, I have no idea. He seems should. unsure. Was it Stallone? <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna say in her prime, Jenna Jameson would be someone. I, if we can count that as an actress, um, and then hopefully after. Uh, you know, after she's done shooting her scenes in Chatsworth or somewhere in the valley, then, you know, maybe I can get my own little uh, private show. 
she was pretty much in her prime. In her prime. So just to be clear, <laughs> you wouldn't hang out with Jenna Jameson now, but only in her 90s prime. I would still hang out with her now, but uh, I had recently seen the Howard Stern movie, and based on what I saw going on in that studio there, that, that I would consider right. Jenna Jameson's prime in that. What about your prime? What year? My prime was between, yeah, my prime was probably between 1987 and uh, 90. 90, maybe 91, yeah. but pretty much late 80s. That was hers too. That was, but, yeah, yeah. But by, you probably had a good shot at getting her then. By 92, oh. 93, it was all over. Yep. Yeah, depending on the film. Okay, uh, and finally, Polly, who did you want to go out and have a drink with? And this is tough. Uh, my first thought was Crispin Glover. But I don't think that's what I answered. I wish I would have so went with Chris Glover. Chris Glover, God, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet I said I bet I said Statham because us at a bar, you know, that'd have been a good time. You'll be like, hey, is this your brother? Yeah, this is your less athletic, less mean-spirited looking brother. Um, I'm gonna say Statham, but I wish I would have said Crispin Glover. All right, was it Statham? Oh, I know I'm gonna get this wrong, or Seton's not gonna guess this correctly, but Tom Cruise. I'm fascinated by Tom Cruise and what makes him tick. I know this is not the right answer, but that's an interesting cat, and I have no idea what makes him tick. Tom Cruise. Good situation. Yeah, same shirt situation, by the way. <laughs> I, can't, I forgot that, because I was leaving and they had to tape that real quick. Um, yeah, Tom Cruise, because is there anyone more fascinating, you, and you'd like to see how they are, after three or four beers and what kind of conversation. Because Tom Cruise to me is top three most fascinating people on the planet. As far as like, I don't get them and I would love to know what, what they're about. What would be the first question you asked him? Nothing. I would let him, I would just start talking about anything he wanted to talk about and then get some beers going and then see where it went. Like soccer, oh, movies. I have a lot of questions. All right. right, I have a ton of questions, but you gotta get Congratulations to the front to row. Peter? Uh, yeah, you, you know yourself, so very good on you. All right, uh, this is the box score. We are taking a break because we're in love. We're in love with the Ram Heavy Duty with its best in class towing, torque, and horsepower. You want to go clear? It's clearly the Ram uh, Heavy Duty. Oh, get more facts at ramtrucks.com. Guts, glory. Ram, look at that shot. Oh, it's glorious. Could you walk over and tap uh, your phone on the Claret Jug? We want to know what winning sounds like. I can do so. Are okay. You, are, you, are you serious? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All, All right. right. I can do so. Here we go. Zach Johnson, Open Champ, and the Claret Jug. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the box. We're closing up shop here at the saloon. Uh, guys, Zach Johnson won the Open Championship on Monday. Uh, congratulations to him. Fritzy, how hard with the time difference have you been trying to track him down? Uh, as always, we are, we're always trying to get to all the uh, the newsmakers, especially the you know those who just won a uh, championship on uh, right away. Initially, it looked like he was going to uh, join us Wednesday and you know do a bunch of other interviews Wednesday, but we made that extra push if there was any way we can get him on the day after winning the championship and kind of. Uh, do something special with him before he starts doing like a whole uh, media tour. It, uh, it happened to work out and we got a call back from the agent who said, hey, well, we can get him on the line and we were able to get it in right after Sandler before he went off the air. So I was pretty pumped that, uh, that we were able to have Zach today. Congratulations, another great addition to your spiral notebook. All right, Zach Johnson called in and talked about whether or not he felt bad about beating Jordan Spieth. Um, well, you know, I mean, yeah, maybe a little bit, just because he's a friend. <laughs> we actually flew home together last night, so. Ooh, how was you know, that? It, it was. It was fun. It was. It was fun. It was fun. It was interesting. You know, it's strange. I mean, our, our our sport may be odd. I mean, we we try to beat each other's heads in, but then when when it comes down to it, we're going to be the first to applaud and, and share in the moment. So that part was really really cool. You know, as a sports fan, he was on the brink of doing something we just haven't seen in forever. So I, I, I get that. He, he was the he was the guy that most people probably wanted to have win, and I get that too. I thought his real original question if he felt bad for speed, uh, because of course he doesn't really feel bad for him because he wants to win every tournament he's in. That's what why he's good at his sport. But then he also said, I am aware that everyone else was rooting for Jordan Speed. 
you know, even during the moment that Zach Johnson knows, the people rooting for him are probably his family, his friends, <laughs> and a handful of people he probably grew up with and went to college with. and Iowa people. Yeah, people are rooting against him, uh, including myself. We were rooting for mm-hmm. Jordan Speed to win because selfishly we wanted to see history, but he understands that. He's a big boy, and either way he won, so he can uh, hold up the trophy. If I'm playing right, I'm sure. Hey, Seaton, is it better uh, for a sports that uh, Spieth is plain and vanilla or if he was golf's new bad boy? Well, you know, I think he's still got time to become a bad boy. I mean, he's only 21, um, so, and he's just getting super famous and super rich. But does he so strike you? Those his, things start yeah. to, eh, well, let's mm-hmm. just remember. Think, <laughs> Eldrick was pretty boring when he uh, sure. came out. He, Extremely turn for him. Interview. Uh, he had no idea what was going on behind the scenes there, so you never really know what people are all about. But no, I, I don't think that. I think we've got enough bad boys, or or even good people are made into bad people. So I'm not in a rush to see uh, Jordan Spieth bad guy. Uh, nah. We could hope though. Yeah, keep it playing, keep it vanilla. Fritzy, who's on tomorrow? Uh, NFL Network host Rich Eisen, who hosts the Rich Eisen Show on mm-hmm. Audience, following uh, the Dan Patrick Stretch. Show. Just before Will this join one. us on Wednesday. Only guest right now for tomorrow, Rich W. Eisen. Doting father, loving husband, Rich Eisen. All right, thanks for watching The Box. We're back tomorrow, same time, same channel. Uh, the podcast is available on iTunes or podcastone.com. Cheers. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey, thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!